Well, hello, you are just in time. It's tea time. We're talking all things proper British afternoon tea. We're gonna have so much fun in this video. We're gonna go through all the etiquette in a fun way. We're gonna talk about such things that you probably already knew this one, that you pick your cup up with your index finger and your thumb supported by the other three fingers. Pinkies are never up. No pinkies, please. But you already knew that. You drink from the side of the cup, looking into the cup, never over the cup. But you probably knew that, but you're gonna learn so many more things in this video. So I'm so excited to share it with you. So stay tuned. It's Heidi Dulaban, international cultural consultant and etiquette expert. So excited you're with me. It's tea time. You're just in time. We are going to talk about all things afternoon tea. By the end of this video, you are going to be able to attend the poshest, most proper afternoon tea like a pro, make it look easy, and you're going to be able to host one at home. So stay tuned. Okay, so let's just start at the beginning. I have set my dining room table for you. I'm so excited you've joined me today. This is one of my absolute favorite subjects, afternoon tea. I adore it. So I'm going to sit down. I'm going to put my 12 inch napkin on my lap if you want to be terribly correct. Luncheon size napkins for afternoon tea, please. Okay, so afternoon tea, where did this all begin? What about tea? What's the history of tea? Well, tea has been around for millennia. You know, we've been drinking tea. First of all, they were eating it, but we've been drinking tea since about 2500 BC. So the Chinese were the first to grow tea, the first to eat tea, chew tea and then to turn it into a drink that we know today. So we have a lot to, to appreciate the Chinese for the tea and then it spread into India where they also grow beautiful tea. There's beautiful tea grown all around the world in the United States. There's some beautiful tea being grown. Suffice it to say, we love tea. And it's very interesting that all tea is from the same variety. The difference in different teas, green teas, the delicate white tea, black tea, it's all in the processing where it becomes a different type of tea. So there you have that. Okay, and there was a time when tea was 10 times as costly as coffee. It's always been very sort of a um, drink of the wealthy for many, many years. Okay, so now we're going to talk about proper afternoon tea. When did this come into being? How did this happen? Well, it happened in about 1840. One of Queen Victoria's ladies-in-waiting, Anna, she was quite peckish one afternoon about four o'clock because tea time generally is from three to five, so four o'clock tea time. And she was really getting a bit hungry because they did not dine for very formal dinners until at least nine o'clock at night. So about four o'clock in the afternoon, our Anna says, I'm hungry. I wonder if someone could fetch some little cakes and some tea, which they did. It caught on from there, it went on to have its own life, and afternoon tea was born. So thank you to Anna. So now what do we do? So afternoon tea, are there different kinds of tea? Yes, there are. This is the proper British afternoon tea. So when we have afternoon tea, we have tea, of course, and if you go to a lovely posh afternoon tea someplace, you'll be receiving a tea menu, and they'll be listed many different types of teas, and so you can choose. But suffice it to say, whichever type you choose, it will be a loose tea. Loose tea. 
afternoon tea. This is no time for tea bags. No tea bags allowed. So we're going kicking it up a notch. So there are proper afternoon teas, which we have here today. So we'll have tea. We will have a three-tiered tea caddy where we will have finger sandwiches at the bottom. The middle layer is scones or scones. And you say, Heidi, which is the correct pronunciation? Is it scones or is it scones? Well, I'm in the United States. We say scones. I grew up with a very proper British mother. And when you're in Britain, they say scones. And if you're ever worried, you can say, which is proper? Just think, if I don't take a scone, they'll be gone. So you can remember. All right, and the top layer is beautiful little cakes. Okay, so this is proper afternoon tea. The other types of tea are a cream tea. And a cream tea just is very simple, consists of tea and some scones. So that's what our Anna had. And so that was a cream tea. And you can kick it up if you'd like to really go all out. Add a glass of champagne and why not? And your afternoon tea becomes a royal afternoon tea. So I recommend adding a glass of champagne. Okay, so we know a little bit about the origins of the afternoon tea. And now how do we go about setting a table? or attending an afternoon tea? Well, first things, dress a little nicer than you normally would. This is not a formal affair. It is not supposed to be a formal affair. It's supposed to be a fun affair. So, you know, not jeans and, and hoodies. Take it up a notch and just have fun with it, I say. So to set the table for proper afternoon tea, it also is simple. This is a fun thing to do. Consider hosting one. By the end of the video, oh, you're going to, I'm sure you're going to get your invitation list out and you're going to start planning. So we have a plate and we have a luncheon size plate smaller than a dinner plate. It's simple. We have a fork on the left where the forks live and we have a knife on the right and a teaspoon for our tea. Of course, we have a teacup, and when we have our teacup, it's always on a saucer, and the handle should be at the three o'clock position. So if our teacup is the face of a clock, the handle is at three o'clock. We will have a tea strainer. This is a little tea strainer. It has a little base, and here is the strainer. When we go to use it, we simply place the strainer across the teacup and we pour the tea through the strainer because again, remember we have loose tea. And then you just simply drain it and put it back on its little base. So obviously we have our tea and then we have sugar. And I recommend if you can find this at your local grocery store, buy sugar cubes. I like the brown and the white. Go all out. You can then ask one lump or two. Your milk, and then you can have some butter, jam, lemon curd, cot clotted cream, which is very typical in England, which is a very, very thick, heavy cream, is clotted cream. And that is also lemon, because you know, some people like to have lemon. If someone takes lemon, be sure that the sugar goes in first if they're having sugar and lemon because the citric acid in the lemon will not allow the sugar to dissolve if you put the lemon in first. So remember that sugar in first if you're doing sugar and lemon and you would never put lemon with milk for obvious reasons. Okay, so then we have our three-tiered tea caddy. This is very typical to have three tiers Maybe you'll attend an afternoon tea and it's only two tiers. Well, that is fine too. But what I'm showing you is what is expected and what is proper in the highest circles of afternoon tea. This is the highest, highest form of afternoon tea. 
So we have finger sandwiches at the bottom. And the finger sandwiches are usually maybe some sort of a, a salmon or some sort of a salad, maybe a, a little chicken salad or cucumbers or watercress. Uh, just lovely, they're meant to be picked up with your fingers. Then we have our, what do we have? Scones, right? and now our little cakes as we said earlier. So there is order to how you eat them too. We'll go into that in just a moment because we're looking at our teapot. And now we need to talk about the star of the show, the tea. So how do you prepare the tea if you're hosting one at home? Well, you'll have a lovely little teapot and I suggest before you host your tea, Fill the teapot up with water and then pour that water into a measuring cup. So you can measure just how many cups does your teapot hold. My teapot here holds three cups. I know that because I did this a little experiment. Why we want to know this is because we need to know how much loose tea to put into our teapot. So here's the formula one heaping teaspoon of loose tea per cup and one for the pot. So what I would, what I did earlier was I took loose tea and I boiled water, always fresh water. If you reboil water, it gets a funny taste and you don't want that. So you want freshly boiled water. You pour the boiled water into your teapot and then because I know that my teapot is three cups I took three one two three heaping teaspoons of my loose tea and then always one more teaspoon for the pot as we say so I have that in and it is steeping if you like you can even get a little timer so you know just how long you want to steep the tea. It should be steeped from three to five minutes, depending on how strong you like your tea. Sometimes if you are served afternoon tea in a very posh, lovely establishment, you will receive your tea in a pot, and sometimes you'll receive an extra little, very small little pot with extra hot water. And that is for you to just Keep adding hot water to your tea if you'd like to just extend it a little bit. So if you're ever wondering, what's that extra little pot of water for? That's to just add, as you drink a little bit of your tea, then you can just add a little bit more. Okay, so now we think, all right, I think we should just start with a cup of tea. Now, tradition has it that the person that pours the tea is the guest of honor. The person that pours the tea, it is called doing the honors. So let's say you're hosting afternoon tea at home and this is a special occasion, it's someone's birthday. So instead of the host pouring the tea for the guests, you would ask the birthday person, would you do the honors and pour the tea? And that is a great honor. And of course the birthday person is going to say, absolutely, it'd be my great honor. So. That's, remember that, the person that pours the tea, it is an honor to be asked to pour the tea. So since it's just me today, I'm going to be pouring the tea because you haven't shown up quite yet, but I do appreciate you tuning in on video. So how should I start? Well, I'm going to start. It has steeped. I know we have the right amount. It's freshly boiled water. I've chosen the tea earlier and you can have a lot of fun with all the different types of teas. And so I am going to take my strainer from its little base and I simply put it over my teacup. And it's that easy. Then I'm going to take my tea pot and I'm going to pour tea directly through the strainer. The strainer is there to catch any little drips. And now as the person doing the honors, before they would pour, they would say, how do you take your tea, strong or weak? And you're saying, well, why would you ask strong or weak? Because it's been steeped coming out of the pot. Well, here's why, because you need to know how far up to pour 
the T. If they say, I like it quite strong, then go ahead, pour it about three quarters full. If they say, I like it weak, then that means pour it only about half full because they can either fill up the other half with milk or perhaps remember the other little pot sometimes it's on the table full of hot water, then they could dilute it and add it with just fill up the other half of the cup with the hot water. So remember that. How do you take your tea? Strong or weak? Okay, so I like mine strong. So I have mine about three quarters full and I've used my strainer and I've caught the loose tea. If you can see, I've caught the loose tea. I make sure no drips are coming and then I replace the strainer into its little base. And as I want more tea, I just repeat that. And the little strainer just keeps catching any loose tea. Okay, so now you could say, well, would you like um, milk with that? Or would you like sugar? Or would you like lemon? You'll ask your guests. But I have something for you that is so controversial. We're gonna have some fun with. You noticed that I poured tea in my cup first. That means I'm a tiffer, tea in first, tiffer, because you do not want to be a miffer, milk in first. Okay, here's the controversy. In the very late 1700s, when all this beautiful porcelain, the ceramics were being made in England, specifically on a town, very nice little town called Stoke-on-Trent. There was someone named Josiah Spode there making pottery. Uh, the soil is very clay-like, conducive to pottery in Stoke-on-Trent. And there's some other little communities there. It's, in, uh, it's a very beautiful part of England. And Mr. Spode is working, making beautiful ceramics, beautiful porcelain, but it is very fragile. And his friend Josiah Wedgwood Lived, a great friend lived in the same town. He is doing Wedgwood. So Spode and Wedgwood have been around for a very long time. Well, they found that while the porcelain, the teacups were very, very beautiful, Mr. Spode was known for making the whitest porcelain inside. And the whitest porcelain would show off the beautiful color of the tea just like the ancient Chinese did. The ancient Chinese, when they were drinking tea, took it in the whitest porcelain cups so they could admire the color of the tea. So Mr. Spode was doing the same thing, but when the hot tea hit these beautiful, delicate cups, they shattered. So what did they do? Well, they started experimenting. Well, how could we change the formula of our ceramics to make something that's stronger? And you know what they found? They found if they actually used crushed bones of ox, in particular oxen, that that made a very strong, strong porcelain, a very strong teacup, so strong that you could pour hot tea into the cup and it would not shatter. And guess what that became years, a few years later, it became known as bone china. There you go, that's where that came from. Fine bone china. It has actual oxen bone, the ash of oxen bone in, in the formula. Okay, so, Sounds great, now they have made, and Mr. Spode and others have made this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful china, this bone china that can withstand the very hot temperatures of the tea. However, that beautiful, strong, yet delicate cups, they were, that china cost three times as much as the regular earthenware cups. So only the very wealthy could afford that, right? So what did the people that just didn't have that kind of money do? Well, they had to put the milk in first. They were miffers. They had to put the milk in first because that tempered the cup. So when the hot 
tea hit that cold milk, it had tempered it and so the cup wouldn't shatter. But the wealthy, they were so wealthy, they could afford the three times as much the cups, these beautiful bone china, and so they could pour the tea in first. So there's where that comes from, the stories. Okay, so we have our tea, and so now I'm going to say, well, how do I take my tea? Well, I actually like growing up with a British mother. She was very typical uh, as far as her tea taste. She likes um, milk and sugar, and that's how I grew up drinking it. So I'm going to have a, one lump of sugar. Now you drop the sugar cube near the edge, and I did that delicately because I didn't want a splash. This is all about elegance, okay? And now I'm saying, would you like some milk with that? Why? Yes, please, I would. So now I will take the milk because it goes in afterwards because I'm a what? A tiffer, not a what? Miffer. So then I pour the milk in. Okay, now I have a little milk and the tea is the perfect color, just the way I like it. So now how do I go about stirring it? There's etiquette, of course there is. Okay, so you put your spoon in and am I gonna go around and around and bang and bang on the side of this very delicate fine bone china? No, all that work went into this, making this in Stoke-on-Trent, no, 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 no. So I merely put my spoon in to the teacup and I into straight down in the middle. I don't hit the bottom of the cup. I do not hit the sides of the cup. I don't hit the cup at all. I just gently move my spoon back and forth and it works. It works. It has blended this beautifully. And then I put my spoon on the saucer and now I'm ready to drink this beautiful tea. All right, so now Let's get back to the tea caddy, getting a little hungry after all of this, aren't we? Yes, I think so. Okay, so what is the etiquette with the three-tiered tea caddy? Well, we start at the bottom and we work our way up. So when you're attending that posh afternoon tea and you sit down and you look at the three-tiered tea caddy and you say, wow, this place is really something because they're doing it exactly as Heidi said. Sandwiches on the bottom, scones on the, in the middle, little cakes at the top. We start at the bottom with our little finger sandwiches because this is supposed to sort of take the edge off our appetite. So I simply take one and I put it on my plate. Now, if you're being extremely proper, if you want to know the extreme proper way, and you're sitting with some friends at an afternoon tea, and you think, oh, the sandwich I want is on the other side of the tea caddy. What's the etiquette? May I turn the plate? No. May I ask someone to just pass it? You know, I'm sure their hands are clean. No. You know what the proper, the highest circle is? you don't get to eat that sandwich. I know, I'm sorry. You eat the one closest to you because they're all gonna be great, right? That's only at the highest circle, so it just depends on how proper you want to go. Okay, so because this is finger food, I'm allowed to pick this up with my finger. Or if I think, well, you know, I think it's just a bit large, I think I will just use my knife and fork and I will pick them up and I will hold them properly because I, of course I know how to do that. And then I can cut and then I can eat my sandwich with my knife and fork if I like, no problem. And of course you know how to handle your utensils. And then we rest them on the edge of the plates in the V, upside down V pattern. When we're resting, blade always facing in because a blade out means aggression back to middle age roots. Okay, so we, we have enjoyed some sandwiches, let's say, and now let's say it's time for a scone. So, yes, yes, you've picked the one closest to you, take it off, and then we can just break it open with our hands because like any bread, we never cut bread. We break bread, biblical reference, 
break bread with Christ. So we break our scone and then we think, you know, would you like a little bit of uh, clotted cream, that really thick, heavy cream? Would you like a little jam? Would you like a little butter? And I think, yes, please, I think I'd like a bit of jam. So I would take the jam and then I would put a little on my plate. Yes, put it on your plate. And condiments always go, there's etiquette for that, on the left side of your plate. Then we have some butter if you wish. And so what is the etiquette with the scone? You just break off one bite-sized piece at a time. And then you would take a little bit of the jam and you would put onto the scone and then you would eat it. And then you would start over, you do one piece at a time. Okay, so there's lots of different things. Is it the cream first, the jam later? How, what do you do? You can do what you do and it just depends on where you are in England. So you can do whichever way you would prefer to do. Okay, so we've enjoyed the scone, we've had our beautiful tea, and then you can just keep replenishing your tea go using this, this strainer or the extra little pot of hot water if you like, and say now, okay, it's time, we've enjoyed all this, and now it's time for a little sweet. And so I would look at the top and we could help ourselves, and I think I'm going to take a macaron, it looks quite lovely and again there I could cut it with my knife and fork if I like or I could eat it with my hands as well. So afternoon tea is just one of the most delightful experiences. I absolutely love it. I seek them out. I'm a huge traveler. Well I haven't been so much during COVID but I can't wait to again and I no matter where I am in the world there's always especially the posh hotels proper British afternoon tea offered and I don't miss them. Wherever I travel, I have been to so many beautiful ones and I host them at home myself. I've hosted them in other venues for people because it is just so much fun. I've even done some virtually during the pandemic because we can just really go into the etiquette and I can tell you so many more historical stories if you like. Um, you know, just the origin and where the everything came from, I think it's just so fascinating. So thank you for, for listening and, and, and staying tuned in because this is just the most wonderful experience you can have with your family, with friends, and I've even gone to them by myself when I'm traveling alone for whatever reason, and I see an afternoon tea. Oh, absolutely, I seek them out. And so at the end of the afternoon tea, when we've enjoyed all the tea we can have and all the, the lovely sandwiches, scones, and cakes, then we put our knife and fork across our plate in the finished position, just as we would any other time, which is across the plate. If the plate is the face of a clock, it would be about 20 minutes past 10 o'clock. And at that diagonal, that signals I'm finished. And at the very end of our afternoon tea, when I before I get up, I would of course blot with the napkin, it's only a blotter. And then I would place it on the table to the left side of my plate, and then I can get up and go on about the rest of the day, having enjoyed a lovely, proper afternoon tea. So I hope that you have enjoyed this. And remember, this is afternoon tea. And it is not high tea. High tea is something completely different. It's a real supper. Lots of heavy cheeses and meats and things and tea. But it is served after a hard day's work on a high table. So please don't make that mistake. This is afternoon tea. It's been a delight. I've loved sharing this with you. Please drop me a comment. Where have you had afternoon tea that you especially loved? I have so many around the world, so, so many. My absolute favorites, the Milestone Hotel in London, if you must know. Um, of course, the, the Ritz is fantastic and, and there's just so many wonderful ones around the world, literally around the world, Northern Hemisphere, Southern Hemisphere. I've enjoyed all of them. I, I, I'm on a quest 
to to enjoy them at every posh place. So please drop me a comment. Where have you had afternoon tea that you especially liked? Because if I haven't been there, I'll make a point to get there. Thank you for tuning in. Please stay safe. And as I always say, please be kind. Thank you so much.